Hi everyone, welcome to the second episode of A Very Queer Book Club. This week I'm sitting down with The Trevor Project to chat about Love Creekwood, um, the work that they do and how those things intersect, so it's very, very exciting. Um, if you've not purchased your copy of Love Creekwood yet, you can do so by following the link below um, and purchasing it from Karis Books and More in Atlanta. You can purchase the entire Simon verse from them. I do want to give two little disclaimers uh, for this video. One, there will be spoilers for Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and Leah on the Offbeat for this video. Um, there will not be spoilers for Love Creekwood, but there will be spoilers for those first two. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that was you were all aware of that. And then I also wanted to mention that Trevor Project is a 24-7 crisis and suicide hotline uh, for uh, LGBTQ plus youth. And so while you will not be discussing in depth any of the things that they deal with, but I do want to mention that those topics will be brought up. Um, so if anyone has issues with those, I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware. Um, they will not be talked about in depth, but I just wanted to make sure everyone knew what was coming. I also wanted to let you know that if you are in need of any of the service services the Trevor Project offers, uh, there will be a little clip at the end of this video um, that this Trevor Project created about the services they offer and how to use them. And I will also be putting the phone numbers down below in the description. So if anyone is in a need, um, those services are available and I hope that you use them. Um, anyways, enjoy the Trevor Project. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jacob, he, him, his pronouns, and I'm thrilled this week to be joined by The Trevor Project um, and Caroline. So hi Caroline, how are you doing? Please tell us some more about yourself. Hello everyone, my name is Caroline Katus. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the major gifts officer of The Trevor Project. Happy to be here with you, Jacob. Amazing, so for anyone who may not know, will you please tell us a little bit more about what The Trevor Project is and what it does? The Trevor Project is the largest suicide prevention and crisis intervention organization for LGBTQ young people. We provide a 24-7 telephone, text, and chat service that young people, LGBTQ young people can reach out to us 24-7. Anytime they need someone to talk to, we have trained counselors uh, ready to speak to them about anything they're going through. That is, that is so amazing, and I think, you know, it's been around, I believe, since 98, I think. I was doing, and it's just such a wonderful um, uh, resource, and I think it's so important, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. Are there any other, is there anything else that the Trevor Project does other than just the hotline services that people may be able to, you know, use or um, any other resources that are out there? Yes, we have a number of other program areas. One is Trevor Space. Uh, we're the world's largest safe social networking site for LGBTQ young people. You can go to trevorspace.org and connect with LGBTQ young people from around the world in a safe and affirming community. Uh, we are doing research on the mental health of the LGBTQ youth and published research papers and um, as well as talk about the issues that LGBTQ youth are facing. We have an advocacy program that is working to end conversion therapy in all 50 states uh, in the US and as well as in towns and municipalities. Uh, we are also working on educating um, about mental health awareness and the issues that LGBTQ uh, youth face. And, um, working to ensure that all schools have suicide prevention policies and suicide education uh, as part of their curriculum. And I want to know, you know, kind of coming back to Love Creekwood, um, how are stories like Love Creekwood and Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda and, you know, the other works that Becky has done kind of tied into what the work you do at the Trevor Project? So, um, all of Becky's books are so incredible because they share stories um, about LGBTQ young people and they normalize um, being LGBTQ. Uh, and that is so important both for LGBTQ young people to see stories and see folks who reflect themselves because that's not often portrayed um, in mainstream media or in all the books and to for others allies out there um, to recognize that when you have a character that might be part of the lgbtq community 
They're not defined by that ident gender identity or um, sexual orientation, that they are a dynamic uh, character and a dynamic person. And there's so much more to them than, um, than that gender identity or sexual orientation. And actually in Love Creekwood, something, you know, Abby and Leah do something really specific um, that, you know, I think is kind of really speaks a lot to what you do with the Trevor Project. So I don't know um, if you would like to, you know, could you talk a little bit more about that and that moment in the book? Yeah, it was, it was a beautiful moment. So uh, Simon was going through a tough time and uh, Abby and Leah recognized that and they reached out to Simon and asked him if he was doing okay and said that they were worried about him. And that's so important to have that type of messaging and let other young people know that they should check in on their friends and it's okay to be direct and say that you're concerned if you are concerned. Opening up that door for a conversation of talking about what might be on somebody's mind or if they are going through a hard time or feeling depressed, then you can share with them and support them or even offer them resources um, for someone to call the Trevor Project or chat with the Trevor Project. And there are resources out there for LGBTQ young people and the more um, their peer-to-peer -peer support networks offer them those resources and support, the safer they will be and the more that they can flourish. Amazing. Um, and are there any other, and it's in Love Creekwood specifically, but in, in general in the Simon verse, are there any other themes or um, really strong, you know, symbols or anything that, you know, stuck out to you that really kind of connect to stuff that you do with the Trevor Project or, you know, just are important in general? Definitely. And definitely have to give it up to Becky for putting all of these incredible themes and the unique challenges the LGBTQ youth face. Uh, when a young person is coming out, it can be a challenge to figure out who you are going to come out to first, um, whether it be your family or your friends or a teacher or a counselor and, um, and that unique dynamic of if you don't share right away, are you lying to your friends? Are you hiding it? But every single person has their own unique coming out journey and we should respect that. And it is really hard to come out. You don't know people's reactions because there is so much discrimination out there and um, their young people are faced with rejection when they are coming out to their communities. Um, so that unique challenge that the characters um, have when they are coming out, uh, young people reach out to the Trevor Project all the time. Um, sometimes they'll say like, I think I'm gay or um, another identity or sexual orientation. And we're able to celebrate them for that moment and be the first person they come out to and um, talk to them about how they might feel uh, coming out about, feel, how they might feel about coming out to other people in their community and how to do so safely. Uh, we also published a coming out handbook for young people to review and to think about how their gender, gender identity or sexual orientation um, looks like and how that can change. And just because they identify one way doesn't mean they're stuck in the box and it's a really beautiful progression and it's part of who they are. Um, and one thing you mentioned actually that I wanted to kind of go back to real quick is you mentioned everyone's coming out experience is a little bit different. And what I think I love most about Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda in general is that Simon's coming out story, well, yes, I mean, the book was, it's a, you know, rom-com full of lots of teenage drama. Th at the core of it, the drama is not about him being gay. It was about him kind of being, a, you know, a, a not great friend for a moment and lying, you know, lying to his friends about other things. So is that something that you see, is, is that something else that other people kind of call the Trevor Project about? Or is it, you know, do you ever see that, like, the intersectionalities of other high school things kind of coming into play or is it mostly just kind of queer and you know coming out issues? Uh, young people reach out to the Trevor Project whenever they're in crisis or considering suicide or going through a struggle. Um, they could be struggling in school, they could be struggling in their relationship with their uh, with their partner who is, could be also part of the LGBTQ community. Um, they could be experiencing intimate partner violence. They could um, be experiencing bullying at school. They could be going through a fight with their best friend and that's really, really hard for them in that moment. And the fight could be over a ripped blouse or it could be something so small, but 
um, no matter what crisis they're in, we are there for them. We're there for them when they're, they got a bad grade on their, on their exam and they're really worried about what that could mean for their college future. Um, right now during COVID, we've seen um, a significant increase and young people reaching out to us with particular anxieties around the economy, around getting sick, around being away from their supportive networks. And we're there to let them know that they're beautiful, deserving of love and respect. And it is, it is hard what they're going through, but they, they have the strength inside to, to get through it and that we're always there for them. Amazing. And so do you think you know, stories like this, getting into the hands of young people, do you think that could possibly make the work you do at Trevor, like ease the work you do at Trevor Potter? Or, you know, like, because I feel like it's important to get these stories into the hands of young people. And do you think we're moving into a direction where, you know, that will kind of carry the load as well? Do you think? Yeah, so when we think about the Trevor Project's mission to end suicide among LGBTQ young people, really the last line of defense of so is someone calling a crisis, um, crisis line or a suicide prevention hotline text or chat. What, is every, what else can we do in society to make LGBTQ young people feel supported, respected, and loved? Uh, and so having stories like this that are completely normalized, the LGBTQ experience are so important. And um, ha and having people understand what LGBTQ young people go through and those unique challenges helps normalize that as well and um, helps people realize that it's okay to talk about mental health and it's okay to check in on your friends is also so important because that helps that support network. Um, and specifically for adults, our research has found that one supportive adult in a young person's, a LGBTQ young person's life can reduce the risk of suicide by 40%. So adults everywhere and whether they be peer adults can be that supportive person to LGBTQ young people. Um, and kind of coming back to uh, you personally, I mean, how did you kind of first get involved in the Trevor Project and how did this come into your life? Because it has to be a really special kind of thing to be a part of. It absolutely is. Um, I love, you think about all the colors of the rainbow and I get to work with every single color of that rainbow and every single, um, every single one of the letters of the LGBTQ acronym. And I, I have worked in nonprofits and social justice and uh, philanthropy my entire career and um, I'm originally from California and moved to New York after college because I knew there were a lot of nonprofits in New York and um, I am a lesbian woman and I have I know what it's like to not be accepted for just inherently who you are and the person that you are and the person that you were born to be and when I learned about the Trevor Project uh, I knew I wanted to be a part of the staff and they had a role for me and I was so grateful to be able to share the work um, as my role as a fundraiser is sharing the incredible work that all of our staff members do and encouraging folks to get involved and be a part of this community and help us support and help us save even more young lives. Um, and so what is it like then being, you know, an adult lesbian woman, seeing these young queer high school stories now being told? Because I know when I, at least when I was, you know, in high school, there was very few and far between. Um, and they weren't all, you know, the highest of quality or, you know, highest, you, you didn't see them everywhere. So what is that, what is that like for you? It's so beautiful. Yeah, I didn't read a single story about any, any type of, um, any type of queer folks when I was younger and didn't know that I was a lesbian for, for many years. And I really, um, I wonder if I had more stories or more characters um, on television that I could relate to that would kind of help that blossom in me. Um, my, my, fam my, my mom had kind of gay, gay best friends, but I didn't know any lesbians um, until I really even was out of college. Um, and so it's so great to have Abby and uh, Leah there and their so sweet relationship. And 
um, other characters. And it's really, really a beautiful thing. And it makes young people realize who might think that there are no other gay people uh, in the world or there's nobody else like them, that there are people like them and that those people will welcome them into their community. Incredible. And so what are actually, because you mentioned, you know, some movies, what are some of the other stories that, other than, you know, maybe the things in the Simon verse that you've kind of latched onto in your adulthood um, that you really, really loved and found the representation? Yeah, I'm, I really believe that it's important to lift up Black queer voices and um, the show, a show like Pose just shows um, that Black and brown trans women were the ones who created so much of the fabulous gay and LGBTQ culture that we enjoy. Uh, so it's incredibly important to look at our history and, and Marsha P. Johnson and the, um, the, the black and brown trans women who started the gay rights movement and to honor their legacies and stories. Uh, there's also a beautiful book called Here Comes the Sun uh, by Nicole Dennis Ben. Uh, and it's a coming of age novel about a lesbian living in Jamaica. And, and that's a country in where gay, uh, being gay is still criminalized. And it's a really, it's a really beautiful, heart, heartwarming and heartbreaking story at the same time that shows the intersectionality of race and um, gender identity and sexual orientation. Uh, and again, just as you're saying that these stories are so important to share and get in the hands of the young people so they know that there are people like them. Well, and it's so exciting, like, it's so exciting that we're seeing so more, much more of this because I, and, you know, in next, and that's actually in this month because in, in July, we have a book coming out, um, a, a retelling of Cinderella that centers around a, a queer, les a black lesbian. And I just, it's just so exciting to see all the different, you know, cause you mentioned Pose, the intersectionalities of the queer community coming out now in more, in more media. It's really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, but coming back to the Simon verse, um, if you could be friends with any of the characters, which one would you want to be friends with and why? So I, I feel like the easy answer is Abby and Leah because they're so amazing and care so much. Um, but the the character that I most really enjoy when their their letters are shown or they're they're spoken about is Taylor, because Taylor is just so quintessentially Taylor. Um, there's kind of a in the Hollywood and Broadway world, there's something called um, out of straight out of central casting, and Taylor really just is that. And just the way from her email signature to, um, in her. Uh, or the way she notes that the the cathedral that Simon visiting is one of her top five cathedrals. Just <laughs> she is who she is, and um, she's true to herself. And my friendship circle is really made up of unique characters that bring the, their full selves to life. And um, and I think Taylor is just that. So I think um, if you could come speaking about you know some of the stuff from you know that you, when you were back in high, like back in high school, what are some of the pieces of advice that maybe you would give yourself now, you know, looking back and, you know, working at the Trevor Project, speaking with young people, like you would get that, what would you tell yourself now as a, as a high schooler? I would tell myself to, when you think you're different, explore that a little bit more. <laughs> dive, dive in deep and see what that means to you and really take time for, that self-reflection. I think so much of high school back then and today is working on your grades and working on your extracurricular activities and your sports and time with your friends and um, everything that goes in so social media and watching and watching television and your shows, but really take time for that self-reflection of who you are and who you want to be and um, celebrate that the, everything that you find when you are reflecting about yourself. I love that. I love that. Um, and I also would love to know um, just a little bit more about the relationship that Trevor has with Becky and just what that means to Trevor. And, you know, I, I, what just what it, what it means to Trevor and why that relationship is so special. Speaking of so special, Becky really, <laughs> really, really is. Um, she is so creative and so wonderful and such an incredible mom. And um, I've 
been able to have the pleasure of getting to know her over these past few years because she's been an incredible supporter of the Trevor Project, incredibly generous um, with um, the money that she's been receiving from the work that she does in the Simon Verse. And we are, um, we are able to invest her generous support in helping more LGBTQ young people and training more volunteers to be crisis counselors. And um, she also, when she was starting to write these books and um, understanding that when young people would reach out to her, she was did what lots of great authors do, is did her research on the community and the resources out there. So uh, from very early on, when young people were reaching out, she was off, off and talking about coming out or talking about their struggles. Uh, she told me that she was so grateful that the Trevor Project was there because she was able to refer folks to the Trevor Project when they were going through something and knew that there would be some a crisis counselor there to talk to them if they were having a hard time. I love that. Yeah, yeah, she's an incredible special human being. Um, and so I guess one of my the last things I want to know is what what can people do if they want to get involved? What, how can people get involved? You know, I, there's a, I'm sure a multitude of different ways, um, but what are just a couple that if people could wanted to get involved right now, they could, you know, they could do. We love uh, folks come joining in our Trevor Project community. Um, if you're over 18, you can apply to be a volunteer. Um, you can be a crisis counselor over telephone, text and chat. Uh, if you go to our website, thetrevorproject.org, you can find out how. We have a lot of folks who um, host fundraisers for us and or, or who donate to us. Um, we see all the time on our social media channels, like I'm dedicating my birthday um, money to the Trevor Project, or I am making a donation in honor. We're seeing parents now who LGBTQ young people have shared that they reached out to the Trevor Project and those parents are so grateful that their, their child did. And so they are, um, they are making a donation. Uh, we pe people host Facebook fundraisers, TikTok fundraisers, YouTube fundraisers. Um, and support our work because every dollar we raise is another volunteer we can train and another LGBTQ young person to support. You can also do local advocacy in your community. Um, learn whether your state um, uh, allows therapists to, uh, to perform conversion therapy on LGBTQ young people and advocates to um, protect those youth um, from in your state from, uh, from conversion therapy. Uh, you can contact your superintendent in your school to see what their um, to see what their suicide prevention policy is and see about implementing one. We have a model school policy on our website that schools can implement to make sure that their students stay safe. And um, just like Abby and Leah did, check in on your friends, um, on your positive friends or your friends that you do see that struggle and have a hard time. Being that supportive person can make a difference. And um, they will appreciate you for it. Um, and are, is there, where do you hope to see, you know, in five, 10 years, either the Trevor Project or just the queer community as a whole kind of going in, you know, in, in reference to this, the stories now being told and, you know, the progress that's being made, where do you hope that we are going and where do you hope that we will end up? Uh, I think we still have have a very long ways to go to ending discrimination and ending um, violence against LGBTQ young people and specifically more marginalized communities. I mean, the murder rate of Black trans women is one of the highest in the country of any demographic. And um, we need to make sure that we are uplifting the voices of um, Black and Brown LGBTQ folks and making sure that they are a part of this fight. They started the fight and we make, need to make sure we're not leaving them behind. Um, we need to make sure that we're supporting each other as much as that we can, um, that people have access to mental health um, resources and support. Uh, and we need to uh, you know, have those tough conversations. And um, I think so much of the, there's stigma around saying the word suicide, but there's, uh, you don't have to have that stigma. Uh, if you think somebody might be considering suicide, if you ask them, are you considering suicide? It actually opens up 
for them to be able to share their thoughts and they're not so in their, uh, their head about it. And it will open up for them to help access support or resources they might need. Uh, so yeah, reducing that stigma and uplifting um, the voices that really need to be right now in our movement for equality. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm, it was a thrill to talk to you. Um, the very last thing I would like to know is if you could sum up either what the Trevor Project means to you or what the Simon Verse means to the, just sum, sum it all up into one word and where you kind of hope and the hope and impact it has in one word, what would that word be? I would say acceptance. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Bye. Well, see you later. Have a good one. Thank you so much for joining me today. Next week, I'm going to sit down with the incomparable Becky Albertalli and talk about Love Creekwood and the entire Simon verse. Uh, so be ready for that. Um, and again, check out the link in the description below to purchase your copy of Love Creekwood from Karis Books and More in Atlanta. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you.